uh, very gently and uh, whimsically. Uh, who are you? I'm Pooh. Oh, Pooh. <laughs> sure. Uh, what's a Pooh? You're sitting on one. Winnie the Pooh is very straight. He's like a little child. He's just totally honest and says it just the way it happens, the way children do. They don't have any hidden meanings. Is anybody at home? No. Bother. Isn't there anybody here at all? Nobody. Somebody. Because somebody must have said nobody. <laughs> Happy Wednesday, Piglet. Piglet's so sympathetic. He's so little. <laughs> and, and, and he's always trying to be such a nice guy and trying to get along, trying not to show that he's scared when he's up in the air uh, like a kite, you know. And, but he does get panicky, but he, it's always still a kind of restrained thing. Oh, no. Stop. Hello, Rabbit. Rabbit, he was always frustrated. You know, he and he was just a worry ward about everything. Honey? Oh, no. I'm Tigger. T-I-double-G-R. <laughs> that spells Tigger. Tigger, of course, was always kind of fun because he was no cares in the world. He just went out there and he just did whatever he wanted to. And of course, he always got into trouble. And that was, that was fun. <laughs> Some bouncing, huh? <laughs> Say, how did this tree get so high? Hello, Mrs. Kanga, ma'am. Some of the traits are... I tried to bring to Kanga and Rue, which was the mother-son relationship, and trying to think of Rue as a five-year-old boy. Is your sweater warm enough? Yes, Mother. We wanted to have, and Walt wanted to have, one kind of an American character that would also bring in the youngsters in America. And a Gopher is a, t a very American animal. <laughs> Somebody call for an excavation expert. I'm not in the book, but I'm at your service. Gopher. The name is McCard. There was an effort to make some, put some comedy in, and that was the uh, the Gopher. First thing to be done is uh, get rid of that bear. He's gumming up the whole project. It was very much like the Badger and uh, Lady and the Tramp. In fact, it was a real takeoff of it. Uh, we were pleased with him, except that we were very nervous about it because, uh, after all, there are Pooh-ophiles. There are people that really adore Winnie the Pooh, in particularly in England, and we didn't want to offend anyone. So Larry Clemens came up with this idea. He said, how about if he pops up out of a gopher hole and he says, I'm not in the book, but I'm at your service. Gopher's the name. I mean, it was just one of those wonderful, spontaneous things. And everybody said, absolutely right. I'm not in the book. Double meaning. Not in the phone book, but he's not in the A.A. A. Milne book either. Dash it all, he's gone. After all, he's not in the book, you know. To complement these characters, the overall art design for the film attempted to also keep the feel of Shepard's line-drawn backgrounds as well. Most of these chalk and watercolor concept pieces have never before been seen by the public. We started using backgrounds on 101 Dalmatians that had painted in flatter areas but had lines, ink lines, outlining the shapes. I think it was used to advantage on Pooh by just having the outline of the shapes in the background. The story to be animated is broken down shot by shot in drawings called storyboards. These allow the staff to study the flow of the story and to see where problems might exist. We had about two-thirds of what we considered a feature in storyboards. We were in development. Some parts of it were actually in animation, some of the early areas. Uh, but uh, we were not, we were just really uh, thinking in terms of a total uh, animated feature. And uh, one day we had this major meeting with all the people involved in the Winnie the Pooh project. And uh, Walt said, yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to platform this property. We're not just going to put out a feature because the American public, particularly the children, in America are not familiar with Winnie the Pooh at all. So actually what he did was he sectioned it into three sections. And so uh, we were all kind of like surprised and, and perturbed about it. We said, well, what, we, you know, featurette, why? And he says, you'll see, once we have people aware of the Winnie the Pooh characters, the next time around it'll be much, much bigger. And it'll become classic. It'll become a masterpiece. You watch and see. 
Once the story and characters are approved and before the animation can begin, the dialogue is recorded. Casting the voices for this stuffed menagerie brought out many of Hollywood's most interesting voices. Walt always wanted this believable business. He wanted to transport the audience to some make-believe place that they could never go themselves. And that's what the right voice does for you. Oh, bother. Actor Sterling Holloway, who had provided the voice for the Cheshire Cat in Alice in Wonderland, was cast as Winnie the Pooh. To be in the same recording studio with Sterling Holloway was a great treat. I mean, the man was a consummate artist. I used to watch the way he performed. He used to underplay his lines. He would do them so softly and so easily. Oh. Hello. Am I glad to see you? It's more friendly with two. Sterling Holloway was just, well, I was going to say he was a teddy bear. <laughs> he was. He was, uh, he was like Pooh. He was the human version of Pooh. And Paul Winchell is just a genius. Incredible talent, whimsy, timing, all the things that, that require uh, a personality to bounce out of the screen, Paul Winchell has it. When he gave a uh, voice to Tigger, he really did something special. Hey, get to the finch. You come in and you look at all the characters on the wall. You try to see whether you can match some kind of a voice quality to the pictures that you see. I was instructed that Tigger was a very exuberant kind of a character and that at the same time uh, he was a very humorous kind of a character. So I tried to put together uh, exuberant, which was a guy who was very excited, you know, all the time and uh, 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 just uh, <laughs> with his laugh and everything. <laughs> the thing that I enjoyed most about the character, I, I really can't put it into words, but I like Tigger. Uh, there's a certain quality that I feel that I became uh, identified with in my own mind, so that instead of just reading the lines, I would always ad lib. I would always throw in something, like I threw in one day that, well, TTFN, ta ta for now. <laughs> <laughs> TTFN, ta ta for now. Howard Morris, who was a regular on TV's Your Show of Shows and played Ernest T. Bass on The Andy Griffith Show, provided the voice for Gopher. The gopher was a character, we decided to give him a, a funny uh, characteristic and then he whistles through his teeth. It certainly is. I'm working the swing shift, you know. Ralph Wright uh, was one of the story guys and he had a real keen, deep voice. And we wanted Ralph to do the, uh, do the voice for, for uh, the donkey. And so we recorded it. So he is the voice of Eeyore. Thanks is not much of a tale but I'm sort of attached to it. John Walmsley, who starred as Jason on The Waltons, was one of three actors who provided the voice for Christopher Robin. I was 12, actually 11, when I did uh, Christopher Robin. And uh, the character was basically me. Christopher Robin is a little English boy, and I was a little English boy. So I was basically playing myself at the time. Hello, Christopher Robin. Oh, thank goodness you're safe. 